We recently had one of our viewers comment on another Snapchat video that they want to see how you can set up the Snapchat Pixel. Well, that's what we're going to cover today. I will walk through how you can set up the Snapchat Pixel using Google Tag Manager. And then we'll go through how we can set up a few of the conversion events to give you a better idea of how you can set them up yourself as well as verify them before creating a Snapchat campaign. I am already at the events manager section within Snapchat, but whenever you get in your account, whether you just created one or not, you should have a drop down menu here in the upper left hand section of the screen. If you click on the down arrow, you can get to events manager by going to the assets column. We see it's highlighted here as the first option. To create the pixel, go to new event source. And for this video, we're only going to cover the web option. I'm currently not running any app campaigns and I'm not going to cover offline data. It's not going to be as common. So again, click on web. Here's a little warning, more of an FYI. It's just letting you know that you cannot share this pixel with other accounts. It's going to live permanently within whichever account you're using. It's easier if you only have your own account, but for anyone who manages several accounts, just a heads up. So we're good with that. I'll click confirm. And here we see several ways that you could set up the pixel. If you have a developer that controls access to the website and you need to send that person a piece of code, you can choose the pixel code option. So we see this gray section here, copy to clipboard. I'm leaving my mouse hovered over it because it's gonna blur everything out for me, but this is the code that you would need to click on and shoot it over to your developer. And that person will need to put it within the header section on every page of the website, or at least the pages that you would wanna track for your Snapchat campaigns. So definitely your landing pages and any confirmation pages. And you see in step one, it's giving you an example of what a head tag could look like. So that's one way of doing it. I'm going to back out. I'll need to open up a new event source because I clicked out of it. Web again. And there we see our other options of partner integration. As of right now, these are the only partners where you won't have to manually install the Snapchat Pixel. Personally, I've only used BigCommerce, Shopify, and Google Tag Manager. But like I said in the intro, I'm going to stick with probably the most common way to do it, and that's going to be through Google Tag Manager. If you do use any one of these other partners, all you have to do is just click on that option, and it will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the Snapchat Pixel using one of these partners. But what we do see up here, what I have highlighted right now, is the Snapchat Pixel ID. And this is something we can easily just copy by clicking on this icon right here. And now let's head over to Google Tag Manager. Now for our website, we added Google Tag Manager to the entire site. It's going to cover every single page. So what I'm going to do is first just get the base pixel set up within Tag Manager. So I'm going to click new to create a new tag. We're going to have to name it at some point. Let me get that out of the way. Okay. And then we can hop down to tag configuration. You will not find a Snapchat pixel in any of the featured tag types. You're going to have to go to the template gallery. Then to import a tag template, let's search for it. And we want the official one from Snapchat, the snap pixel. I'm good adding it to the workspace. Read that if you want, but I know it's legit. So I'm gonna add it. And there we have the tag type. So the first field that we will need to fill in is the pixel ID. So if we hop back into the ads manager for Snapchat, I'm gonna copy this ID by just clicking on it, head back to Google Tag Manager, paste the ID in there. Next, you can see there's a drop down for different event types. We're gonna come back to this when we start talking about conversion events. But to just track page views on the site, I'm gonna leave it as is. And then I'm gonna scroll down and here we get to triggers. If I click on it, I'm going to choose all pages. Again, it's going to cover every single page where I have Tag Manager set up. Very easy if you're using a template or a plugin. And then I'm going to click save. Definitely recommended to preview so you can test and make sure it's working. But I'm pretty confident, so I'm just going to submit this. Name my version, and then I can publish it. So the next thing we could do is verify to make sure that the pixel is working. And if you have Google Chrome, here's an easy way to do it. If you are using Google Chrome, go to the web store or just Google Snap Pixel Helper. Then you can add to Chrome, add it to your browser. I'm good adding it. Now I know I have it cut off in this screen here a little bit, but you're going to see this logo right here within the top area of your browser. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to show it because there's a lot of other stuff I'd had to blur out. So now head to your website where you have the Google Tag Manager account installed. I apologize that I have all my Chrome extensions not on the screen. I'd have to blur out a few other ones, but you will see the Snapchat little circle ghost icon. If you click on that option, now you should see the Snap Pixel Helper. I already visited a few pages before I started recording the screen, but there's a little history button here. I can click on this, and then it opens up a new tab within my Chrome, showing me the right pixel IDs. It's showing me the pixel event I set up. Remember, I selected page view within Google Tag Manager and the URLs on where the event fired. So I'm good knowing that the pixel is working. If I head back up to Snapchat Ads Manager, we can see that there are no events received. I just set up the pixel. And if you look under the Events Manager title of the page, it says data may take up to an hour to be updated. 
So even though I've refreshed this page a couple of times, we're not seeing anything yet within Events Manager. So thank you with the magic of editing. I'm gonna wait an hour, come back, and then we can begin with the conversion events setup. It probably took about 20 minutes for me to notice some signals within the account. So not even the hour that Snapchat said it may take. But there we see 15 total events. You'll see the chart will show you the activities for these events over the last seven days. I just set it up. So it's just a little tiny circle. Not much to show right now. You're going to see a lot more as time goes on within your own account. You may be wondering why there are two domains showing up when I just added it to my website. Well, if we look at the view pixel details, if we go under domains, the bottom one is GTM. I did do some preview mode, tested out the pixel there. So that's why we're seeing two domains. But really, it is just mine. But if we go down... We see I just have the page view event. That's the only one I have set up within Google Tag Manager. And that's just tracking any visit to my website. But now we probably want to create some deeper actions, right? Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to go back into Google Tag Manager. So let me jump back to the other tab. I'm on the main tag section of Google Tag Manager. And there we see the Snapchat pixel that we just created. I'm going to click on it. And from here, I'm going to go up to the three dots in the top right. From here, I can copy this specific tag. So now we see the name changed. I'm going to go over and rename this tag to what I want to use as the first conversion event. All I did was update the name, but now I want to update the event type. I'm going to leave the pixel ID the same because I want everything to show up within the same events manager. I'm not going to create a new event source, but I will change the event type. I know we got a brief look at it earlier, but here's some of the options that are built within the Snapchat tag. If you want to track add to cart actions, someone starting a checkout, just a basic sign up, someone subscribing logging in, sharing certain content. On our website, we have a lot of video content that people can watch. So I'm gonna select view content. Then I'm gonna scroll down because I need to change my trigger. I don't wanna have the view content tag fire when anyone visits the website. That's not gonna make sense. We already have a page view event created. So I'm gonna edit this, get rid of my all pages trigger. I'm gonna click to add a new one. And I'm gonna select the YouTube views option. This is the same trigger I use in a lot of our other pixel setup videos. What this trigger does is fire events when people watch certain embedded YouTube videos on our website. If you're interested in how you can do that, here's a video I created on how you can learn how to set that up. So now the view content event type is not gonna fire off when someone just visits on the page. It's only going to fire when people interact with our embedded YouTube videos on the website. Maybe that's an important action a user can take that I wanna track as a new event. I'm gonna save this for now. I'm gonna go back in it just so I can duplicate it again. Let's copy it going to rename this to another event type. This time I'll choose sign up. I'm going to focus just on a page visit audience. Think about it as a confirmation or thank you page, but I'm going to make the event type a little bit more specific so I can track it separately within the events manager. And there's my sign up. I scroll down. I'm going to change my trigger again. Let's get rid of this one. And let me choose this URL page view. I'm going to hop into this trigger just to show you the difference. This is not an all pages trigger. It is a page view, but I'm letting this trigger know only fire it if someone lands on this URL that contains see us speak thank you. So if I close out, once I publish this and it starts recording those actions, I know that this event type is for this book us to speak conversion page. So I'm going to save this one too. Head back up because I need to publish everything first. So submit, and then I have to add a version. Now that I got the name done, I can publish it. Okay, I have those two events fired. Now we're gonna go back into Snapchat Ads Manager and we may have to wait again for these events to start showing up. I waited a little bit. This time was probably about 15, 20 minutes again. And there we see a lot more total events. If we go into the pixel details, scrolling down to the bottom, and there we see the updated events. I clicked on a bunch of the video embeds. I know there's currently people on the site watching them on the blog right now. So there's more events there. And then I visited the signup page a few times from a few different devices. And there's 11 total events from that one confirmation URL based trigger. Okay, so we have some pixel events created. How can we use these within our campaign? Let me show you. If we head back up to the navigation dropdown, now we can go into audiences. We haven't set up any yet, so let's get started. From here, I wanna create a custom audience and then I'll choose web events. You can see the sources from the snap pixel. I only created the one event source, so I don't get to change my pixel. It's only gonna use the one that we just created. And then let's search for an interaction. You can see there's a lot of the stuff that we created. One of our events was the signups, and I probably have to name it. Go ahead and update the duration that you want. This time I'm gonna max it out, and I'll create this audience. And then you could do the same for all of the pixel events that you've created. Before you launch a campaign, I hope you create pixel events for the deepest actions a user can take. I'm talking about a purchase, specific form completions, 
those sort of things. Besides the deeper funnel actions, think of the higher level pixel events as well, like a newsletter sign up. Create events off of those so then you can retarget to some of the higher level pixel events with ads pushing the deeper action like the purchase. I'm going to go to another tab where I already have a campaign partially created. When you're creating the campaign within Snapchat, eventually you will see a section for audiences. The one that we just created would fall under the custom audiences section. Nothing is showing up here because I just created it. The audience is not large enough to be eligible to use within a campaign, so that's why we're not seeing something. But as you keep building them and they get enough users, you will be able to select from those. So here's some rules about the Pixel custom audiences. Custom audiences based off of your Pixel will automatically be created if that Pixel event hits 1,000 matched users. And I believe when they create it automatically, the default look back window will be just 30 days. So if you know you get a ton of traffic or you're going to get a ton of hits on certain events, you may not have to even go to the audience manager to create them. But if you want to control how long the user is cookied or in the look back window, that's when it's better to create your own. If I head back to the navigation one more time, I can go under reports, look at creating a new report, because here we can review how pixel events have affected whatever campaigns we are running. If I keep scrolling down and I got to keep going, I then went and clicked on conversions. Depending on which events that you have created, you will be able to add those events to your reports. So there I have a signups total. That's based off of the event I created. And if I wanted to, there's my specific content view as well. So when you are looking at your dashboards, again, I don't really have anything to show because nothing's launched and I'm not actually gonna launch some campaigns. You'll be able to look at the metrics from a variety of different levels to see if users are taking the important actions that you want them to take from your campaigns. And that's how easy it is to get the Snapchat Pixel set up and use Google Tag Manager to set up the Pixel events that you will be able to see within the Snapchat Ads Manager. I only had time to go over just a few brief examples, but if you do have any additional questions on how to set up specific Pixel events for Snapchat, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.